Hello. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Few months ago, I made a video about using internal RTC in STM32. Although, everything was pretty okay with that, there was the problem of storing time. Whenever the controller lost power, the RTC used to reset itself. Today, in this video, we are going to interface DS3231 RTC module with SDM32. As mentioned in the datasheet, you can use 2.3 to 5.5 volts to power the module. We can also use I2C in fast mode, or the standard mode to read, or write data. And then we have these registers, that we are going to write to, and read the time from. So, let's start with the cube IDE. Create a new project. I am using STM32 F103C8 controller. Give a name to the project and click Next. Just want to show you the firmware version at the time of making this video. Click Finish and the Cube MX will open. So first things first. I am enabling the clock from the external crystal. Next, enable the I2C, and clock and data pins will be selected. This is how the connection will be. DS3231 is connected to the controller via I2C1. And PCF8574 is also connected to the same I2C bus, and then to the LCD. I want to run the clock at maximum. So just type in 72, and hit enter. Go to Sys, Debug, and select Serial Wire. Click Save, and the project will be generated. Here is the main.c file. First of all, we need to include the LCD library, because I want to display the time and date on the LCD. Copy the C file in the source, and header file in the include folders. You can get these files after you download the project from the link in the description. This address is defined for PCF8574, if you are using any other I2C extender, you have to change this. Let's include the header file in our project. If you look at the datasheet of the DS3231, you can find the I2C address. This is the address defined for the write cycle. In STM32, the address should be 8 bit long. Which includes 7 bits of the address, and 1 bit for the write. This makes up the address of the DS3231 as, 0 cross D0. Let's define that address. These are the functions to convert from BCD format to decimal format, and vice versa. The data written to the DS3231 must be in the binary coded decimal format, and that's why we need these functions. I am defining a structure to save the time and date, that we are going to read from the module. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let's write a function to set the time. The parameters are seconds, minutes, hour, day of week, day of month, month, and year. I am defining an array, to store 7 bytes of data. The data written to the module must be in this order. First time, then day of week, and at last, date. Basically, we have to write these seven registers. First we need to convert these values to the BCD format using decimal to BCD converter. The array that I created, is going to store these BCD values for the respective register. Now we are going to write these values to the registers. We can do that by taking advantage of the fact that the address of the registers in the module will automatically increment with every write operation. So we just have to write 7 bytes to this first register. And the first 7 registers will be automatically written. I am using memory write function of how to write the data to the specific location in the memory. Device address, address of the register, size of address is 1 byte, the data that we want to write, size of data is 7 bytes, and timeout. Next, we need a function to read the time from the RTC. Again creating an array, to store the BCD values that we are going to receive from the RTC. I am using hali 2 c mem read to read the data from the memory. Device address, address of the memory. Size of address is 1 byte, where we want to store this data, how many bytes to read, and timeout. Address of the registers auto increments and we get the reading from the first 7 registers. Next, we need to convert these values to the decimal format, and then store in the time structure. I am creating this buffer to store the equivalent characters, so that we can display the result on the LCD. In the main function, initialize the LCD. Then, inside the while loop, First we have to read the time, and then convert the numbers to the characters using sprintf function. Put the cursor at 00, zero and display the time. Next, convert the date in the character format. Put the cursor in the next line, and display the date. I am giving 500 milliseconds delay between each refresh. We have to set the time first. I am setting it 20 seconds late than the actual time. Let's build this code. There seems to be some problem with sprintf. We have to include the sddio.h. I have to change the time again. 
Let's flash the code. Select STM32 application. Run it for a little amount of time. Now we need to again flash the code, without the time setting line. So if we reset the controller in future, the time will not set to the same value again. Now it's time to see the actual working. The time and date is working as it should. Even if I try to reset the controller, the time continues to work properly. So I have disconnected them from the supply. The time is stored in the RTC now, and we can access it anytime we want. As you can see, it is around 9 seconds more than the last one. You need to have a battery, if you want to store the time. So, we saw how can we set, and read the time from the DS3231. Next, we are going to read the temperature from this module. Yes it have a temperature sensor also. As mentioned in the datasheet, address is 11H, and 12H stores the temperature. 11H stores the MSB of the temperature data, and 12H stores the LSB. Get temp function is being used, to read the temperature. Basically, I am going to use Halmem read to read 2 bytes of data from 11H address. Then we need to combine the MSB and LSB. LSB must be shifted 6 places to the right. The result must be divided by 4 because the resolution is 0.25 degrees Celsius per bit. There is one important piece of information before we read the temperature. The BSY bit in the status register. This bit goes to 1, when the conversion signal is given. Other than this, we have convert temperature bit, in the control register. Setting this bit to 1 will force the conversion. If we don't force the conversion, the temperature conversion would take place every 64 seconds by default. This is the function to force the conversion. Here, first I am reading the status register. If the BSY bit is not set, read the control register.
and write the modified value with the conversion bit as 1. I am going to force the conversion. Read the temperature, and store the value in temp variable. We need to again use sprintf to convert this value to the characters. To convert the float type numbers, we need to change the setup a bit. Go to project setting, C++ build, settings, tool setting, and enable the uprintf float feature. Now send the buffer to the LCD. Let's run the code now. So here we have the time, date, and temperature from the DS3231RTC module. If I hold the device, you can see the rise in temperature. Again, if I disconnect, the things would still be working fine. This is it guys. DS3231 still have few more features left to be covered. For example, it have two alarms, oscillator output, square wave output, etc. I will cover those in the next video. Real time was the important part, and so we have covered that today. I hope you understood the video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments, if you have any doubt. Keep watching.